Shalom from Jerusalem. Um, I've arrived in my apartment here in Jerusalem, and I'm ready for a once-in-a-lifetime experience of Israel. It's going to be a great transition from China. Um, the first little loophole or adventure was actually getting on the airplane. Um, for those of you that have not been to Israel, which this is my first time, um, the security check is actually pretty intense, um, which I guess I should have uh, imagined, but really wasn't quite prepared. I didn't have much time to think about it before coming. So when I got to the airport in Beijing, I was greeted by uh, pretty much an entire st entire uh, Israeli staff for El, El uh Airlines, which uh, was going to take me from Beijing to Tel Aviv. Um, I'd never been checked, uh, had a security check or interview questions really at all ever in China trying to get in a flight, even checking in and out of the country. But for the Israeli flight, a uh, nice uh, Israeli young man uh, greeted me. Um, and then proceeded to ask me a bunch of different questions. It kind of felt a little bit like uh, going into Michigan back from Canada. Um, then it got a little confusing, though, when I showed them my two passports. Now, if you looked at my blog a couple months ago, you'll see that I had a little incident in China where I lost my passport. Since then, uh, I have a new passport now, but my old passport was found by a Chinese person and returned to the consulate and then returned to me. An interesting fact, and this is a good traveling fact for you, is if you have a passport that is canceled, if there's a visa in it, even though it's attached to that passport number, you can still use a visa. So I've actually been using both passports interchangeably uh, for the last couple months. Unfortunately, that was a little bit confusing for the uh, Israeli staff. Um, they didn't understand why I had two passports. So to make a young man that's a little, a little nervous, even more nervous, they brought over a bigger, burlier, more important looking man to discuss this issue with me. Um, I was so nervous that when he shook, when he uh, reached his hand out to me, I nervously just fumbled and gave him my passports. And he says, no, 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 it's okay, I just want to shake your hand, everything's fine. So we had a conversation, asked me the same question, and went me through. Um, after that, they instructed me to be to the entrance gate to the flight, no more than an hour from when I had met them. So... I thought, okay, what do I have to do now? So I did their wishes. I really quick scarfed down some Burger King, uh, went through the Chinese visa check, went through checking my bags again and for the carry-on, um, and then proceeded to the entrance gate. Uh, after that, I had a brief Skype with my parents and was escorted to the um, this random hallway that was a... Uh, it was the same guy that actually... I had checked me at the beginning of the of the of the security check at the baggage claim, and so he guided me through the hallway. We had kind of a awkward, silent little uh, walk through these random hallways, and then I was taken to uh, a place which is the security area, and that's where they were fumbling through everybody's bags and uh, kind of still asking uh, individuals that were Israeli citizens, essentially, um, you know, what they were going to be doing in China. I got the whole pat down. Um, so yeah, I was mildly nervous. It was kind of crazy. I was in a random place in the airport, and my things were being looked through. But through it all, I actually uh, ended up having some really good conversations with some of the guys. This is what they do for you know every day, day in, day out. They they check people's luggage, and the guy looked at my MacBook uh, computer and he says, "Oh, American, you know, really really need this MacBook, huh?" And so we had a we had a good conversation. I talked to the big burly guy that had checked me at the beginning. He was drinking a Coke, and I said, you know, the Cokes are better here in China uh, than they are in America. And he said, oh, yeah, same thing in Israel. You know, we had a great, we had a great conversation. So by the end of it, um, I had actually made a couple friends, and we all had a good laugh by the end of it. I, I even, while I was waiting, while my stuff was being looked through, the guy said, okay, go to our lobby. We actually have Simpsons on. You can watch The Simpsons while you're waiting. Sure enough, I watched The uh, Simpsons TV show um, while I was waiting, while my luggage was being rummaged through. Um, so it was a very interesting experience. I checked, passed with flying colors, and got on board my flight with uh, without a problem. Um, but it's just interesting to see how different it is to go to Israel from China, or, or really go to Israel at all, than it is for me to go to China. And that in and of itself really excites me um, to be a part of this once-in-a-lifetime experience in Israel. Um, I'm getting to experience a country that's in a different place in the world than China, than the U.S., something that I've never experienced before. Um, we've already been interviewed uh, since we've been here in our apartment for less than 24 hours by an Israeli news source. Uh, I'm going to actually be interviewing with the Saginaw News back at home uh, via Skype in the next 15 minutes.
another interview is going to be in an hour. And then we're going to go experience a great Israeli uh, a festival of some sort. Um, so this is really uh, certainly a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I'm excited to tell you all about it uh, back at home.